their T's how idiomatic three T's yeah he's talking about the three T's in on the label I guess I notice in case of uh, Find all armor pieces. This might take a while, like a long while. Um, in order to succeed, one, the body has to be down, two, autopsy has to be finished, three, Kim ha has to be absent he won't approve okay and this will be devilishly tricky so don't beat yourself up if you manage to send the body to processing without getting hold of the boots I mean just chop it off then what is the rest of the armor come a light to you return to confront him a hermetically sealed door locked by electronic means you're right uh, th you're the right stuff measure head Measure head is amazing. Not soft and weak like other men. There's some bottles there, I think. Man, <laughs> like it's a little bit dangerous too. Nobody betrays your degeneracy. Yeah, Measure head. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. The young woman at the giant's side agrees. My body is unimportant. I'm uh, the police, and uh, we need to get into the harbor. That is precise. The negligence that has led you to succumb to all rule. So the all caps is implying that his his voice is very loud, uh, right? But the voice actor didn't really. He can't. I don't know if he, he tr even tries to pull it off. His face contorts in disgust, as if he were smelling our dead rat. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Alhul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. problem with alcohol. I just drink a little on weekends. Your mouth moves, but the one who speaks is Al Ghul. You are but a vessel for the ghoul now. Very little of yourself remains. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am Sandwich race is waning. What is he talking about? What is this gibberish? Does this 
remind you of someone? The guy down there? First, uh, help me. First, let me make this clear. I'm not a drunk, I'm a cop. I just have a drink. I have to have a drink every now and then. Everyone does. That fat racist over there point to the racist lorry man. They're just him after pumping some iron. I'm the police and I need you to comply now. The race stuff is unimportant here. I just need you to help me do my job, please. First, let me make it clear, I'm not a drunk, I'm a cop, I just have a drink every now and then. Everyone does. The ethanol fungus is deep within your nervous system, pulling the strings. You are merely its pooper now. I see no hope for you or your kind. The race stuff is unimportant here, I just need you to help me do my job, please. It, there's no uh, option to actually manipulate him. To, like, agree to his point of view. Begging for help. Attempting to pass fear for cooperation. How far the Occidental Hablo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. Hmm, who's supposed to be Koikos? Like Koikos supposed to be Slavic? <laughs> or Irish? Or Scots? Hmm. There's a bunch of uh, nationalities that uh, love potatoes. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby. Yeah, you know it. You wrote about all this. Now I just need you to let me go into the harbor. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Hul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skulls. There may be a peaceful solution to this. You could internalize Meshachet's race theory. He would take you as one of his own. Right, good idea. The best idea. What are those tattoos supposed to mean? Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. 
gestures toward the lorry man down the street. I am hot like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. The drawings are precise and look true to their pseudo-scientific ambitions. One thing, however, it is not entirely free of throwbacks in the phylogenetic tree. His large jaw, for example, could be a trait indicative of criminalism. Also, his earlobes could be small. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, that jaw is clearly an atavistic stigmata. Okay, what is atavistic? Uh, feels like something I should know. Atavistic, relating to or characterized by reversion or something ancient or ancestral. In biology, an atavism is a modification of a biological structure whereby an ancestral genetic trait reappears after having been lost through evolutionary change in previous generations. Okay. Atavistic stigmata makes pussy say yes, plenty. Babe, thanks. But I got this. The tattoos on his stunned face briefly form a smile. You have him off guard now. He's preoccupied with this situation with his woman. Does it raise my chance? Bested him in. Craniometrics? <sighs> Craniometrics. This is related to chin. Yeah. The measurement of the cranium, usually the hu human cranium. Uh, to the subset. Uh, what is cranium then? Skull? Or it, Jaw part, cranium, plural, plural craniums or crania. That part of the skull consisting of the bones enclosing the brain, but not including the bones of the face or jaw. Uh, what? You serve the Union, don't you? Aren't they white? Uh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. He turns his eyes toward the harbor, seemingly bored with you. What do you mean race has nothing to do with it? Yeah, but you still serve them. How does that factor enter uh, your life? Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront polycultural capital. 
something your race, nihilistic communists, never did. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. My gem is a mysterious fourth thing. <laughs> Jam, individualism. You have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture, have you not? You have picked them up from rock and roll songs? I've gotten it from Disco, actually. Offshoots of the Zemini's people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my race. But what is done is done. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Simonese race. Okay, well, I'll ask who are the Simonese? The South Island race. Aplo group R4R. We are the rightful masters of the Insulindian archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus and arrived here 4,000 years ago. Millennia before. We are the future. That is all you need to know. So you were born and raised on the islands before you moved to the river shore? I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulumbuir are with me in my genetic dream. I see young Simonese women walk into the grey mass on Ile de Fontaine, waiting on immaculate conception from the pale. What? conception of from the pale what <laughs> so you did not come from the islands no I have heard about it on the radio he would be appreciative if you did not further chase this line of inquiry in front of the women. So you're not really Seminese, you're just from Rivashol. I'm from Kuron. And no, it is not just in Rivashol. The city is central to the Simoni strategy. Spreading through its trade networks, our culture will dominate the world. You 
have heard enough about our phylogenetic secrets for today. You have extinction to come to terms with. Oh, come on, are you there? And never get in into the harbor. Like... I thought I would get more point for this, like I confronted him about not being from the islands. But only the the skull thing counted. Okay, um Kim, what about what do you think about this? I think this racist is better than the last. But the next racist will be the really good one. That will be the Hmm. How do you know there will be an next racist? There always is. Race is reality. Subscribe to his advanced race theory. Go ahead. No, really? What the fuck? For race secrets. Was what ninety two percent or something? Oh, fuck. I want to learn this race theory of yours, <laughs> so so that we could become friends. And why does he does it still give me options after I failed? I want to learn uh, this race theory of yours so that we could become friends. Try to smile pathetically. Do pathetically. not be naive. I know the answer to the great race enigma. Why would I share it with a deformed infant? You do not have the devotion for servitude. Come on, I don't need more points in, in the conceptualization. God damn it. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular, it's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights and they solve the shit. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's me. I've been establishing my superstardom hard lately. Should we go on the route of Superstar? Because it doesn't really fit mostly. Uh, but actually, eh, let's play with this idea a little bit. Yeah, that's me. I've been establishing my superstardom hard lately. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop. Dick Mullen. Salem Rocky Bayi. Badass on the edge disco cop. Time to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera. Lights. Actually, maybe it doesn't fit well. With a sorry cop. With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you. And you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. Hmm. 
line is still logic. Ugh. First, let's make this absolutely clear. No one is saying you're an actual superstar in the groupies and cocaine riddled with the hepatitis C strikes a lionesque pose with the mic kind of way. You're not Guelme El Million or David Dewey's. No, you are a metaphorical superstar. You bring that rock and roll auth authenticity and passion to a line of work where people don't expect or want to see it. Where some would say it uh, doesn't belong. Law enforcement. I have a problem <laughs> with the skill points, like there's, there's so little of them. And like, if I start a new thought and I don't like it by the end, the bonuses it gives, I need to spend the points to clear it, to forget it. <laughs> around the lorry is probably stored fuel here now they store booze a lorry stuck in the oh, traffic the, jam this big heavy grab made machine is well kept for such an old machine the windows are clear They've been recently washed. You can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. What kind of stickers and insignia? The driver has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. What about the back seat? The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. A book with ragged edges catches your notice. The front cover features a large muscular man. The title reads, Man from Eelmdal in the Lost City of the Pygmies. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. The lieutenant nods toward the racist lorry driver. You think this lorry belongs to our tough guy? Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. A lorry stuck in the trap. That's all we can do. Oh, money, money, money. Kept in uh, good condition. Nice. The small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. This 
the picture is a little bit different than the others. The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... What? <laughs> so am Amber type, is it uh, older photograph? Like, um, using older technology? a positive photograph on a glass made by a variant of the wet plate collodion process like a print on paper it is viewed by reflected light uh... so is this the one where you need a a blanket to shoot or hmm Okay, um, let's continue. S snap your fingers in front of her face. Wait. The attendant stops you before you can snap. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? Why? I just told you why. If you say so. What do you mean? The woman still has her eyes fixed on the photograph. Excuse in me, ma'am. I'd in like to ask you some questions. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Very well. Nothing. Her smile just keeps widening. Her hair is grey like lead nothing to do here an old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island pointing toward the sea it looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods uh yeah i don't know if this is possible <laughs> This looks very, very t thin. The yeah. So is it actually uh, damaged, or it just made to look damaged? Uh, who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the Squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachol, son of Philip II, the opulent, father of Philip IV, the insane. Alright. Watch me... Failing this, heard the creator story from Rene. Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. Profligacy, what is this? Uh, hoard them. <laughs> Reckless extravagance or wastefulness in the use of resources. 
uh, licentious or dissolute behavior. In what way? Well, he blew through the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the suzerain of Rivershaw. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti-centennial revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. Fair enough. I can I can imagine how <laughs> this happened. Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber, where he stored unfathomable wealth. Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. Krugerrands. Okay, what is that? Krugerrand is a South African coin, first minted on 3rd of July 1967 to help market South uh, America, African gold and uh, produced by Rand Refinery and the South African Mint. Gold coins that were minted by Republic of South Africa Okay. I'm not sure how that. Uh, why this is here. <laughs> Maybe there is some kind of meaning behind it that I just can't catch from the first glance. He called it the Sol Auron. It was obscene. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers, like some obese dragon, instead of a bed, like a normal person. Is, is Sol uh, a sun in Latin, I think? So it's golden sun. Uh... Oh, the probable fires, uh, no wonder everything went to shit. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. The what now? You see, old Philippe wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry, he was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. Okay, what is nose candy? Cocaine. So he was addicted to nose candy, a bloated druggie? That's what the revolutionaries said 150 years later. Right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped His Majesty's mortal remains in the Insulindian Bay. This is a lot to process. His Majesty's courtiers it... said it helped him connect with the higher realms. Okay, where is uh, he buried now? Beneath the cold waters of the Insulindian Bay, thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleaned out the royal mausoleum. But it happened so long ago. Why? Why is this? Where's the statue here then? <laughs> What happened to the statue? The original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged 
during the landing of the Coalition's airships, during the turn of the century revolution, when Martinez was leveled. Okay. Most historians think the Coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue. If the Communards had more time, they would have reduced it up to even finer pieces. Hmm, so it's actually been damaged even. <laughs> and still somehow standing. It, uh, how is this supposed to work? I can imagine like maybe some tricks of the um, monument building where you grab some kind of very firm metal uh, make it seem to be impossible to build um, like in put on top something light but massive and you have an illusion that it, it should be impossible but, but it's just fine but this is not supposed to be this way <laughs> it's already um, damaged well whatever it's a, it's a it's a game some years ago a group of liberal artistically inclined individuals designers mostly thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Rivershaw in the poorest part of the city oh wait so it's not the actual statue the statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart like an instant frozen in time, a rare butterfly trapped in amber, floating on a sea of shit. Okay. So, this is my first... Uh, su suggestion? Yeah. No. Ah, I don't remember the word assumption yeah first assumption that it was built in a way as if it's uh, damaged that's brilliant so far funny and nihilistic people in martinez tend to disagree as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders with more nuanced social awareness than the young ironists Ironists. Those critics might have it wrong, though. There's more to it than just ironism. But you can't say what precisely. Perhaps this art mystery will be solved at a later time? Eh, I mean, it could be also... Um, have a look of, like, ancient history being dismantled over time and turning into ruin i guess philip the third the squanderer however with his bronze face up in the air doesn't seem concerned about what the hoi polloi think of him in death wait hoi polloi sounds like a real one Isn't this something Polish, like a, a squad of the cavalry? No, something different. Uh, hoi polloi. The general populace masses. Hoi polloi is an expression from Greek that means the many or the strictest sense the people. In English, it has been given a negative connotation to signify the masses. Synonyms for hoi polloi 
include the plebs, the rabble, the masses. Okay. Uh. Not that he ever did in life either. Wow, you work hard. What? <laughs> I do? Isn't Saver Flary is a sneaking skill? I do? Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. What are you on about? What hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand, and lelonium after you re-emerged. Hmm. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way. And you won't let it break you. You ride. <laughs> uh. I fucking ride till I die, bitch. That's just what it's like. Life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. Franco Negros, he said, but Franco Nigerian, it was before. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. A little bit too close to the N word. <laughs> it ain't easy, but you do it day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. What is this? Because I didn't uh, make that ceiling guy give some of his money either. I You couldn't say I, I took some money from the mana guy too. Uh, oh, and then there is the uh, pawning stuff of the to that suspicious Roy guy. Wait, he was called Roy? What's her? Mm, I, I don't remember. Can't say that. You shook him. You're a killer. A shark. You could say I took some money from the Malana guy too. You didn't log that in as a donation either. You don't log any of that shit in. You're a straight rider. What are you fucking on about? Like, okay, with the ceiling guy, it's just been at least 10 uh, René. But with the Manana, he just threw me a coin. <laughs> it was like nothing, it's just a pocket change. Um, I don't remember with Roy anything. I don't. I didn't get anything from him. Oh, and then the responding stuff of that suspicious Roy guy. Yeah, like I, I didn't sell sell anything. I just looked in my inventory, but then exited. Yeah, you're in the sales business. Shake them for shit and then pawn it off, law officer style. Hmm. I guess I've made some jills, sure. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack 
or shoot yourself in the mouth, but you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself, are you rich? That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? Uh, this is not true. <laughs> He's not a hard worker. <laughs> like, I just started putting this character's life somewhere manageable. Party guy riding my ass, <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> Fucking taxes, man. The system is broken. Uh, is there an actual answer? There's a market for corrupt cops out there, but uh, the immigrant cops have priced down. Uh, okay, um. Yeah, there is no uh, real answer, but I guess it's trying trying to, to have a commentary of, on those people who actually think that if they are poor, then it's like anything but them uh, to blame. I don't know. Why am I so poor? Because of the taxes. G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, so much as sneeze. Aunt Tex is almost non-existent in the Gossam Estate, that is Rivershaw. I thought there were no taxes. You and I both. But they got those indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax. This tax that doesn't even have a name. Plus, there's the stuff people in other countries pay for that makes them ask for more money from you here. The Gossam Estate's a myth. In total, the coalition government is taking. 98% of all your money. <laughs> no fucking way. I guess I'm a free market fundamentalist now. I sure that that seems like a pretty big number. This isn't helping me solve my money problem. It's only making me into a free market type. Um, I'm guessing it's going to give me a, a, a new thought to build based on my choice. But what exactly will it do? This isn't helping me solve my money problem. It's only making me into a free market type. What are you, a racist? Don't be a racist. Be a cool immigrant, ultra-liberal free market advocate. Ride or die, keep it street. This guy's appropriating the emerging Boogie Street lingo as part of his sales pitch for the free market economy. <laughs> what the hell is happening? <laughs> what guy? Well, if not, being an ultra-liberal makes uh, me a racist, then I guess I should be an uh, ultra-liberal? Uh, you're trying to sound like boogie street youth to peddle me this stuff, aren't you? 
Yeah, ain't it cool, Ryder? Ain't it street? It's not. A bold slogan, human knocks, covers the truck. Ruins full uh, of snow, no one leaves here anymore. What is this yellow? Ooh, physical instrument? What a mess of a man my character is. A Stars Riker, one of the finest Zimsk made motor carriages ever. An oldie, but a goalie. Which one? Who drives these? Not many people outside of Grad and Revachol West, too, it appears. Hey, Tim, check this out. A Stash Heiko KK2. That's a classic model. Never thought I'd see another one repainted after what happened last time. What happened last time, Kim? An old case for my precinct. A couple of gymst migrants saw a stage Raiko stopped in the street, painted just like this, muddy brown. Murdered the driver on the spot. They said it was an honor killing, Hussar style. The gymst community protested the trial, flying the banners of some old king or whatever. Five thousand came to protest. Correction. 4,395, the fourth largest public protest of a criminal trial in Revachol. I do correct, correct, Kim, but it was only 4,395 people on the protest. Is that so, officer? I'll take you at your word. <laughs> uh... Um who are the Zemsk community? People we are paid to protect. Let's leave it at that. What uh, they sentence the killers to? Four years for murder in reunion. The perps were remorseful. Their sorry knocked eight years off the sentence. That's the system. The prisons in the Greater Revachol Industrial Harbor are already full. Prisoners are expensive to maintain. The longer the sentence, the larger the cost. Kim, would could you could our hanged man have uh, been the driver of this car? Could it be another Stajrako murder? Honestly, that just doesn't seem like the type of vehicle our dead guy would drive. So my initial guess is the two are not related. But also he had uh, very expensive armor on, so... I still have no idea what car they are talking about. The, the brown one or this one? I'm guessing because they mentioned the, the one painted brown from before maybe this is the same interesting before we proceed I've got an opinion on this paint job yes detective I 
think it looks better. No. They should have left it baby blue. You sure you're not Jimsk? He shares a smile with you only for a second. Yes, you're sure you're not. Or if you are, it's only in that Revisholian way. Four to five percent maximum. Okay, nothing I can do. Oh, level up. What should I spend it on? There's so many things. So there is a problem with the corpse um, and I need to up my inland empire to... Yeah, and this is the, the main mission so I, I want to actually solve the case. And I want this man to be down before the end of the day. So I guess we're investing in this, in the hunch. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and white boots. His skin is marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. On his chest, a fading web of tattoo. I'm gone. Yes. Wait, am I talking to the dead man now? <laughs> Where have you gone? Into the wild pile yonder. Oh, the same uh, voice actor as in the beginning, with the reptilian brain. Where he's dead. In the past, way out in the west. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. You are now, but uh, who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. I have another and a killer. And I have another question for you. Go ahead, Copa. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your black frothy liquids starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Go ahead. Ask me more questions. You fucking love questions. Why do... Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a cop -roony. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, Copper Rooney Rooney. This is getting up B now. Who killed you? Love did me and Brother Copo. It was love all along. Is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. Of course not, my name is Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. Listen to yourself. You're not a Raphael anything. You're probably just Harry or something. That's right. Harry.
I feel like I've been getting a lot of hairy lately. You might be onto something there. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face, motionless. Looking into my eyes, standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Because it's my job and I want to get paid, <laughs> like... Um... Maybe this will lead to something, something indescribable, unforeseen, miraculous. <sighs> the clown lips on the corpse appear to smile. The face rotates before you slowly. I hate you, you stink, you are boring. Do I remind you of someone? A child born with Muller's disease. Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. Muller's disease. Scurvy in infants? There's no pictures. <laughs> Harlequinism. Oh, there are pictures of that. Reminds uh, a reptile people. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's the same actor too. So maybe it's supposed to be a callback to the beginning. Uh, a deep sea creature. Myself in the bathroom mirror. Uh, a baby affected with <laughs> harlequinism. I mean, Encyclopedia said so, so... Uh, you sure I got out of that one? Coppellini. Do I remind you of... A child born with Muller's disease. No, not quite. Be fair now. So it, it was the right one. Myself in the bathroom mirror. There you go. Look at that bright kid. We're birds of a feather, you and I. Soon you'll be just like me. Just keep drinking and having a good time. Uh -oh. It's a matter of weeks. Sounds like where this is going. Feeling nausea, vomiting, tenderness or pain around the liver area. Tiny red lines on the skin above waist level. More like days, copper. The clock is ticking. Your liver tells you so. Okay. Well, it didn't really help. I guess it was an interesting exchange. <laughs> Come back later, copper. Amuse yourself with my... Of course. You have questions, don't come back later, Corpo. Amuse yourself yep, with the my preliminary examination is done. Let's get him motive. down from here. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. 
He doesn't actually think the challenge is unique. He thinks it's frustrating, annoying, and harder than he thought. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting the airship strength material. I mean, you just need a ladder and then maybe you could slide the, the news if it's not fixed entirely tight. Or, well, you could cut off his head. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, let's see. Can someone else do it? We could sew the branch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't... It's funny that <laughs> cutting off the head was... Um, higher on the list of ideas than the cutting off the branch. Um, seems like a lot of hassle. Let's not do it. Maybe we could shoot him down. What? Maybe we can ask for help from the harbor? We could show the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch? Yeah, it seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. I mean, it's not that risky, fucking car. <laughs> Maybe you could shoot him down? Yeah! Bang bang time, pig! Shoot his head off! How? With the buckle ties the rope to the branch, that's a good spot to aim. But isn't it reinforced and... Like, pff, one bullet does one really do much I think right uh. well ah yes I see if the shot hits that there might be a chance to release the belt yeah now we're talking Entertain a Kuno with some shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. The lieutenant is undecided. On one hand, he wants to shoot some gun. On the other, it's an awfully stupid idea. <laughs> Let me try. Uh... Actually, don't. It has bad idea written all over it. Uh, what else can we do? Can someone else do it? Someone else? You mean like the police? What do you mean, the police? <laughs> I mean, someone who's below detective? Someone like a paid garbage man? Or a cleaning crew? I have bad news for you. That is a detective. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down, fast. Maybe we can ask for help from the harbor? I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appear to be suspect in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. I would really prefer if there was another way. These people might have an agenda. Uh... Pff, fucking shooting the pistol? I don't know. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt, like chicken. On a skewer. Uh, 
So two options, either go uh, to the harbor and they probably may, might have some agenda or try to shoot him and I might get hurt. Or, or we might waste bullets that we actually need or something happens with the gun. Hmm. Yeah, let's ask for help. I don't think it's that simple, and we can manage, I think. Okay, they do have the tools and the men. And since it looks like they put him there... They can get him down. <sighs> okay, let's do it in the lousy, dangerous way. But... Won't it be dangerous? To ask the suspect for help with the victim's body? To be indebted to Evrard Claire? Very much, yes. Which is why I would have preferred us to handle this ourselves. Clearly we can't. Suck my dick, bitches! Hmm. Maybe we should have tried shooting and then it would have been just a skill check and if we failed that skill check we could have had this as a backup i guess maybe i don't know how this would work out whatever uh but also this seems like we actually need to get to this boss of the union Everett claire um for which we need to go to through the for the man, ugh, there's so much to just get that body down so it might not be uh, possible until the day ends how do we get inside the harbor? from the gates, by negotiating or fighting I'm unenthusiastic about fighting or we can try to find some secret third path an ugly door. Hmm. To the gates. Let's negotiate. Well, I already tried. <laughs> and we now we don't have a skill point to try to repeat that. What's wrong with being indebted to Everett Claire. He's a dangerous and corrupt man, and we cannot predict what he will want from us in return. Yeah? Don't go being someone else's bitches. Your kudos, bitches. Eh. What is physical instrument? Mm, no idea. Fuck, does Kuno care? I talked to Manana about the armor. So? I said thank you, wasn't too keen on chasing down the armor in any way. way. Uh, fuck, okay. Kuno's a giver like that, yes? 
he looks slightly confused. Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. Whatever, kid. What is this? Trying to be cool with your new asshole? Kuno was just being nice to you. You got fucked bad. Now limp the fuck out of here. After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. But what is the actual armor then? Hmm. Yeah, the kingdom of Kuno. The fuck do you want with it? Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno doesn't fucking... Access the harbor and ask the for Everett Claire's help. So he said there's a another secret way. Hmm. How do I get it there? Wait, what? I remember him trying to go there before, but not now. Oh. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. What is this? It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Glad you asked. When junior researcher Olari Tal invented Etonite in the Vartner Polytechnic Institute some 30 odd years ago, he thought it would last forever. Hence the name, Etonite. Sadly, the only lasting thing turned out to be the material's highly carcinogenic effect. Mm, only one in perception I have. And there is clearly clearly a passage here. What is this? Money and healing for morale. Where's my perception? No, actually it's fine. Plus one is default. Hmm. Good child, that uh, corpse made me puke twice, and I was wondering why you don't. Stay away from me, pig! You don't want to see what happens when you corner me. Hmm. This trash container is locked. Oh, wait. The sliding lid I forgot a about that says <laughs> whirling in rags. We got the key to. With a well oiled crack, the lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Um. There is, but you won't like it. Sweat forms on your brow. Your hand is still on the lid. We could get some more bottles from this uh, trash and maybe uh, uh, something else to sell. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. 
We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Look under the boxes of carton. You see, milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Soleil cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. And turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Pick up the rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. Oh. Are those... What? But it was locked, and the... The, uh, the key... Was... Managers. The victim's clothes? Cadaverino door is faint. If this belonged to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. Hmm, that's weird. Guitar mark blue jeans. Pockets. Empty. Or emptied. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but... He looks into the container. The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. This is a military type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that... Hmm... A thrown out towel, a mug, that's all. All right, we should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. He nods toward the red haired boy behind him. But again, like, the trash was locked. The only employees could have uh, thrown out the garbage. So how this boy could have done this? Or can you throw out? No. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Whatever. You think someone from the whirling uh, might have been involved, maybe? Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash, the lid was locked, and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. Yeah, we need to ask uh, the kids who put them here. The fuck's he on about, kids? You hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. See? Okay. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. Search the food waste? It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills, mostly. Unidentified sludge and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey. Potato and chickens. Nothing. It's nothing. Nothing more to see here. What's this? What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. 
It's shiny. Looks like oh, the corner of something. My badge. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? Didn't I flash my paperwork based on what uh, uh, the the girl from the hostel said on in, in the phone call? No, it can't be. Yes, it is. Look, this plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form. Miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board. If you don't mind my asking, how could you have let your paperwork end up in the trash? It must have been cramping my style. It has foreboding quality to it. Maybe I needed to lose it for the great bloodletting to begin. I think I didn't want to be a cop anymore. That's why I tried to flush my cop life down the toilet. Well, I have no idea. I was... I don't have any recollection and... <laughs> complete amnesia well he does not know His what eyes to say express a rare condolence then he picks it up lucky we found it you should take stock of what remains just to be sure some has not made it into the hands of the RCM's adversaries organized crime and the like there might have been police secrets in your notes Okay, I'll do that. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? He peers into the trash where soggy curtains and uh, rags stink uh, uninvitingly. Some items, such as the ledger you found, are interactable. Go to your inventory and select the interact tab to read your paperwork. Okay, it's, it wasn't a badge, though. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. Uh, in a dick? Only in its social sensibility. <laughs> mm hmm. The lieutenant briefly glances at the mug, and then returns his sight to the trash. The container sounds a muffled gong. That's one thing out the list. I think we got it all. Fuck does Kuhn okay? Kuno doesn't. Hmm, there's nothing new. I'll die before I squeal, pig. Hey, kid. What's this kid shit? Fucking mind games. I'd rather die than squeal. Get the fuck out of here, face. You got done. Talk to me. Uh, damage ledger. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Urinal? Not urinal. Is this another British thing? Anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. 
Thank you, Waterlogged Ledger, for spelling it out for us. Below the pathetics? Terror. Do not look into its blue heart. Calm down. I also said that it's going to be harder for me stay, to stay uh, sane if I'm more... If, if if I have more psyche, if I if my character is more sensitive, but I haven't really noticed that so far. Yeah. Also, my morale is just base of my morale is higher as well. So it's kind of strange that uh, said that in the first place. Inspect the toilet paper. It's just toilet paper. Stick into the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Still wet, the toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off with your finger and voila! The ledger now looks marginally better. An aluminium block runs the width of the board biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Run your finger across the aluminium. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. It is similar to the RCM watermark on your blazer the lieutenant mentioned. Didn't he say something about the headlights of his motor carriage? That you can read these there? Lieutenant, is this one of those hologram watermarks you mentioned? What? Yes, uh, allergen watermark used for adding information to RCM property. <laughs> yeah, hologram. <laughs> Um, he's lost in his own notes. It uh, takes a moment for him to see it. Interesting. What kind of information? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Oh, I can learn my address, maybe, but... Hmm. Maybe yours will have how many cases you've solved. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. Well, it could give some information. It's always useful when you have barely any about yourself i guess how can i read it any capable light with the right wavelength will do you mentioned the headlights of your kinema yes rcm vehicles have headlights tuned especially to reveal halogen watermarks the lieutenant fears this will lead to fiddling with the delicate folding headlights on his motor carriage they're dear to him Isn't all, is it already tuned? What's the danger here? <laughs> That's all, thank you. Okay. He, he retur tur returns to his neatly kept notes. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take a break. Oof. Have some tea and maybe come back. Yeah, I, I do have some time. Uh, I'll come back. Come back in uh, in a few hours. Oh. Fuck! We still haven't put down the body. And it's still the day one. Jesus! I hope. I wonder how long this game is. I heard it's around 60 hours, but considering how I play, it might be more. <laughs> we'll see. 
Well, be right back. <laughs> 